Guess what? The Boeing 737. Max is in trouble again. This time, it's not just a single person speaking out. An organization is stepping up with serious accusations. With Boeing already grappling with issues surrounding the 787 and even the 777X hitting turbulence during testing, the company now faces another major challenge. What exactly is this terrible, and how will Boeing's new CEO handle it? Let's dive into it in today's episode. A U.S. advocacy group has criticized Boeing for allegedly concealing information related to an electrical issue on an aircraft, which subsequently led to an accident. The Aviation Safety Organization reported that the plane that crashed in Ethiopia in 2019 experienced multiple issues, including an uncontrolled roll at a low altitude. According to the organization, over 1,000 operational aircraft could be at risk of electrical failure due to manufacturing problems. The complaint focuses on an accident that occurred just minutes after the plane took off from Addis Ababa in March 20, 19. The crashed aircraft was a 737 MAX, a model that was entirely new at the time. This was the second such aircraft lost, following a similar crash off the coast of Indonesia in late 2018. Boeing representatives stated that after the Ethiopian Airlines flight 302 accident in 2019, the company fully cooperated and provided relevant information to the investigation. They also emphasized that we defer to the investigative agencies for further information. Both accidents were primarily due to poor design of the flight control system with improper activation caused by sensor faults. The organization released several documents on its website, including aircraft manufacturing records related to the Ethiopian accident leaked by Boeing employees. These technical documents highlight issues during the manufacturing process. They describe a clear picture of chaos and confusion in the production process at the 737 factory during the construction of this aircraft. According to the documents, there were shortages of electrical components and missing or incorrectly installed wiring systems, and employees faced significant pressure to fix errors. These issues are believed to be related to electrical problems experienced by the aircraft for many weeks and months before the accident occurred. Another document describes an incident involving the same aircraft three weeks after it was delivered to Ethiopian Airlines. Records of communications between Boeing and the airline reveal that the plane experienced an uncontrolled roll at low altitude while preparing to land. The cause was later identified as a wiring system fault. The document states that this information was concealed from government agencies, law enforcement, the airline's passengers, the victim's families, and the public. What do you think about important information regarding aircraft incidents being concealed? How does this affect your trust in airlines and aircraft manufacturers? This suggests that production quality issues at the Boeing factory are ongoing, leading to incidents such as the explosion affecting an Alaska Airlines flight earlier this year. The fund is managed by Ed Pearson, a former manager of the Boeing 737 factory in Renton, Washington. He gained prominence after the two 737 MAX accidents and has frequently testified before U.S. legislators. Mr. Pearson has consistently asserted that severe production issues at the factory played a key role in the two accidents, a claim that Boeing has repeatedly denied. The official investigation into the Ethiopian accident conducted by the country's Accident Investigation Bureau seems to support this view. The investigation suggested that manufacturing defects caused sensor failures, leading to the crash. However, this version of events was rejected by the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, which found no evidence of this, and attributed the sensor failure to a collision with an object, possibly a bird. Thanks for following until this part. Please don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. Now, let's move to the next part to see how Boeing's attitude toward this. Boeing representatives have firmly denied allegations that crucial documents were concealed, maintaining that multiple investigations have yet to validate Mr. Pearson's claims. The company asserts that its transparency in providing relevant information to investigations has been unwavering and that no concrete evidence has emerged to support the accusations. Earlier this month, Boeing's newly appointed CEO, Kelly Ortberg, addressed these ongoing concerns by outlining his commitment to rebuilding trust in the company. Ortberg emphasized his strategic approach to restoring confidence, which includes relocating to Seattle. This move is intended to position him closer to Boeing's manufacturing facilities rather than remaining at the company's headquarters in Arlington. By doing so, Ortberg aims to directly oversee production processes and engage more closely with the teams responsible for resolving current issues and ensuring that quality and safety standards are upheld. Do you think this approach is effective in restoring trust? The company has been required by the Federal Aviation Administration to implement a corrective action plan 
to improve safety and quality control. However, in a call with reporters, Mr. Pearson stated that reports from factory employees indicate that current efforts to improve conditions on the production line are still entirely inadequate. He pointed out that FAA inspections are often announced in advance, which could lead to issues being temporarily addressed before the inspections take place. This latest issue adds to Boeing's recent troubles. The company is still struggling to recover from the aftermath of two 737 MAX crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia, which resulted in a total of 346 fatalities. In July, Boeing agreed to plead guilty to a charge of criminal conspiracy to defraud to settle the U.S. Department of Justice investigation into these tragic accidents. The electrical issues with the Boeing 737 MAX have had severe consequences for the company. The problems have damaged Boeing's reputation, eroding public and customer trust. Financially, the company faces significant costs related to repairs, maintenance, and compensation for airlines and victims' families. Perhaps airlines using the 737 MAX will suffer service disruptions and lost revenue due to the grounding of these aircraft if the ban is forced. The impact extends to regulatory changes with increased scrutiny and revised safety standards affecting Boeing's operations. Overall, these issues have created a complex challenge for Boeing, affecting both its financial standing and its relationship with customers and regulators. Atlas Air expands fleet with three new Boeing 747, eight freighters. Atlas Air Worldwide is set to expand its fleet by adding three Boeing 747-8 freighters. In response to the growing global demand for wide-body air cargo capacity, particularly driven by the rise in cross-border e-commerce. These aircraft, secured through long-term leases from BOC Aviation, are expected to enter service by the end of the third quarter of 2024. As the world's largest operator of 747 freighters, Atlas Air emphasizes that these additions reinforce their commitment to the Queen platform, offering high payload capacity and nose-loading capability. CEO Michael Steen highlighted the company's strategy of integrating these aircraft into long-term agreements with customers to ensure operational flexibility. He said, Atlas is the world's largest operator of 747 freighters, and we are thrilled to expand our wide-body fleet with these three 747-8F following the 4747-400F we acquired and placed with customers under long-term agreements earlier this year. Our growth in this aircraft type underscores Atlas's commitment to the 747 freighter platform and the value it provides our customers, including significant payload capacity and unique nose loading capability. Atlas Air is a prominent American cargo airline known for its extensive global operations. The company specializes in providing air cargo services, primarily using a fleet of Boeing 747 freighters, along with other aircraft like the Boeing 767 and 777. Headquartered and purchased New York, Atlas Air operates under various business models, including ACMI, aircraft crew, maintenance and insurance, leasing, charter operations, and cargo handling for major airlines, freight forwarders, and express operators. Atlas Air's core business involves leasing its aircraft to other airlines or logistics companies, often with the provision of crew and maintenance services. This allows customers to have access to wide-body cargo aircraft without the overhead of owning and operating them. Atlas also provides charter services where they transport goods for specific customers or on an as-needed basis. The Boeing 747 freighters operated by Atlas Air are used on a variety of global routes, primarily serving major cargo hubs. These aircraft are well-suited for long-haul international flights due to their large payload capacity and unique nose-loading feature, which allows them to carry oversized cargo. Do you think this airline is depending on Boeing 747? Some of the key routes and regions where Atlas Air's 747 freighters are typically deployed include Asia Pacific, serving major cargo hubs like Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Tokyo, primarily transporting goods such as electronics, automotive parts, and e-commerce products. Europe, operating to and from cities like Frankfurt, Amsterdam, and London, often carrying industrial goods, pharmaceuticals, and perishables. North America, frequent flights to cities such as Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York, supporting domestic and international trade, and Middle East and Africa, supporting trade routes with flights to cities like Dubai and Johannesburg, carrying a mix of consumer goods, industrial equipment, and humanitarian aid. Atlas Air's 747 freighters are integral to the global supply chain, especially in the e-commerce era, where quick, reliable transportation of goods is crucial.
The airline's ability to adapt its fleet to customer needs, combined with the versatility of the aircraft, makes Atlas Air a key player in the global air cargo industry. How do you feel about Boeing 747 still being a major part of air cargo today?